yeah. Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Guts to Fail, October 1st. This is a, a big day for me. This is my Guinness World Record Day. Four, <laughs> yay, four years ago today, um, I was, let's see, I had just blown the whistle. 10 o'clock it started, it ended at 11. And I was crying so hard at 11, I couldn't blow the whistle to end the event because I couldn't <laughs> believe it was finally over, actually, because it was so hard. But um, anyways, not not the point, but just acknowledging this is a big day. Um, right. So Kelly is our guest today. She is a friend of mine. We've known each other for a couple of years now. We met in a networking group, and um, we actually both moved over to a different networking group called Polka Dot Powerhouse here in Plano, the Plano North Dallas chapter. We both love the group, um, and uh, we've continued our friendship on through there. Um, yep. Lots of little co-mingling, intermingling, and <sighs> Kelly owns something that's uh, so needed in today's world. I wish that. Um, I had had it growing up. Um, she owns a business called the Smart Money Academy, um, and it helps children ages 10 and up learn how to have a, a um, smart money mindset, but she also coaches the parents as well. So she does do adults, but in adults um, more in the realm of parents guiding the kids that she's also teaching. So mm -hmm. I love what she's doing. And I'm going to, without further ado, let her talk about her journey, where she started and where she's at now. Gosh. Okay. Huge story. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I have to back up all the way into my twenties. Then we'll start there where, um, yeah, we had a lot of fun on nights, me and my husband, uh, shopping with credit cards. Like let's go to the outlet mall. Let's go to the mall. And just shop, 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 um, and got ourselves into a huge amount of debt. And um, so at the beginning of our marriage, we were paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. Uh, we eventually had a bankruptcy. We eventually had a car reposition. I mean, it just, yeah, we mismanaged every dollar we were ever given. And it was a huge mess, huge. We, uh, our marriage was very stressful. Um, it just was not a fun time in life. And that went on for many years. So we finally decided we needed to wake up uh, take responsibility, get a handle on our finances. Um, and so we ended up paying $80,000 off in debt in two years. What? And, yes. <laughs> and um, we what, have been... What jobs, what jobs did y'all have? Um, so at the beginning, I was a teacher, a classroom teacher. So making, you know, not yeah. great money. Right. Not horrible, there, but not great. Uh -huh. um, and my husband actually had a huge career change during that two years. He went from a flight instructor to a professional pilot um, during that time. So that was a, a, a pretty big bump in income during that time. But still, you know, <laughs> it, we still started off like I was actually the breadwinner with my teaching uh, with my teaching salary for a while. Did you know that Matt was a flight instructor and a professional pilot and I was a teacher, too? You already yeah. knew that? Yes. Did we? I don't think we've ever talked. I, I listening to you right now is like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> this was this was our twenties too. Okay, sorry, I digress. Keep going. That's okay. Yeah, flight, <laughs> learning to be a pilot is not a cheap endeavor. So um, yeah, no. it, <laughs> it was quite expensive. So we took out student loans. We did yeah all the financing stuff. Uh, anyways, we paid off the eighty thousand uh, dollars in debt. We've been debt free ever since, other than our home, uh, and it just changed everything about our lives. Changed everything. Our we're so our home is so much more peaceful. We are happier people. We are not so stressed. Um, and so it really became our passion to make sure that our kids did not follow in our footsteps. To teach, you know, to do a much better job of teaching them um, than I don't want to say that my parents did, but because um, I truly don't remember any money lessons from them that doesn't mean that they didn't do any <laughs> but um you know we made sure to really drill it in with our kids um so that's kind of on the personal side that's kind of the beginning of that journey and on the professional side i had been classroom teacher for about 20 years and i was just i was ready to pivot into something new and um, try something new and so originally i was trained to be a financial coach to work with adults and I did that for about a year. And but I really found through doing that, my passion was talking to them about how to work with their kids and make sure that their kids didn't get into the same situation, you know, that they were in. Because right. as a financial coach, what I'm doing is helping adults clean up their mess 
which is cool. That's fun. You know what I mean? But when I'm working with kids, that's giving them excitement and a vision for the future. And it's just such a different mindset. Let me let me ask you this. So you yeah. went from cl- classroom teacher for 20 years. If I remember correctly from previous conversations, you were not a math teacher. No, no. I was an English teacher. E- English teacher, just like me. <laughs> Husband, pilot. So weird. Okay. So what? rewind a little bit. Everything that you're teaching is based on your own personal experience and how you were able to snowball and pay off the debt, right? Yeah, uh, partly, partly, yes. I, so what I've done is I actually bought some curriculums and took parts of that. I came up with my own lessons and took parts of that and then my own personal experience. And just because it is a different mindset, um, teaching kids to to manage their money well from the start is a little bit different mindset than trying to get out of debt. Right. Um, and fix a, a problem. So I do bring in a lot of that, um, but not all of it. Like I don't teach kids that credit cards are evil, never use a credit card, that sort of thing. But what I do teach them is here's what it looks like when you use one. Here's what it looks like when you make the minimum payment. Here's what it looks like when you double that minimum payment, you know, and it goes away a lot faster. Um, here's how to, how to avoid using one altogether. So I just kind of teach them the facts as opposed to you know, never touch a credit card type of thing. Right. I love that. Love that. (laughs) Um, Okay. So in your journey, you, you obviously found that you love talking to the parents about how to teach their kids. And so now you, you really focus on um, preparing children to go into the workforce, make money, and then what to do with that so that Mm -hmm. they have this, you know, it's the smart, being smart about money, a smart money mindset. Tell me about how difficult it's been or not difficult in getting the word out that you even exist, because that's a, it's a job. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a career path that I don't think there's a lot of out there because I've Mm -hmm. never heard of one. So what do you, what kinds of things has, has been on your struggle list of trying to get the word out and educate people? Yeah, that's been huge. Um, I use Facebook a lot, Facebook mom groups, um, because typically when we're talking about, because I do summer camps and then after school enrichment. So typically when we're talking about kids um, activities, it's usually the mom that's booking those things, right? Um, So I try to reach moms as much as I can. From that experience, I learned that I tend to attract a lot of entrepreneurial moms, which is great because I am one too. So, um, you know, I, working the entrepreneur groups and getting my name out there that way too has helped. Um, and I think that one of the biggest things that helped was to do summer camp fairs where a lot of the summer camps will come set up a table and then the parents can just walk through and learn about it, you know, what, what's available. So that has been very successful for me too. Have you, um, during coronavirus, I know, um, you had a, an academy or a summer camp scheduled at the bungalow and I've had so many face to face things scheduled you know, all over as well. And I've had to pivot to a virtual learning. Mm-hmm. Have you, um, have you done anything virtually and moving forward? Will you, if you have done things virtually, will you continue to offer a virtual, um, uh, way of, of taking your classes so that you can reach a bigger audience in the United States or will you keep it local and face to face and why? Um, so before coronavirus, I had already pivoted one section of my class. I actually have a three prong approach. So I work with younger kids, I work with teens and I work with parents. Um, so the younger kids was always face to face and I'll I'll come revisit that for, for COVID. But for the teens, I had a lot of parents coming to me and saying, we need this class for teens. My teen needs this. So I put together a teen class and I threw it out there and twice it failed. Nobody showed up, nobody signed up. Um, and I couldn't even give it away for free. And what I found out was that parents, even though they knew their teen needed it, when they approached the teen with it, the teen was like, mm, you know, I'm not interested. And so who wants to put their money behind something that their kid's going to go to grudgingly and not participate in, right? Mm-hmm. And the other factor was getting a group of teens into the same room at the same time on the same day <laughs> is a lot like nailing jello to the wall. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, they're just so busy. They're all over the place. 
So I had already pivoted that onto an online class and that is self-paced video, um, you know, just a, a series of videos that they watch. Yeah. And that they're much more willing to participate in that because um, they save face, they can do it on their own time, that sort of thing. So I had already pivoted that one online. Um, but with the kids, they need that live touch. They need to be, you know, they don't have the ability to just watch the video and go apply it in life. And so, um, and a lot of what we do is game based too. And so that gets lost, you know, in, in mm -hmm. a video format. So I did um, for the spring, I did pivot to online classes via Zoom um, and we did what we could online. I, um, I much prefer in person. <laughs> it's easier working with kids. I can walk across the room and look at their paper and say, oh, this is where the mistake is and that sort of thing. Um, and so I will definitely keep my local classes as soon as I can. I'll, I'll start those back up again. Um, I will keep an, an online um, part of that, but it will probably only be during the summer. I just think during the school year, it's very difficult to manage everybody's schedules and, and pick a time where across the country, they're either not in school, not eating dinner, not doing homework, you know, that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, summers will probably, I'll have some virtual um, aspect over the summer for sure. So knowing what you know now and when mm -hmm. you started, when did you start the Smart Money Academy? And was it, when did you name it that? Like, when did that start? <laughs> so it started almost three years ago, February would be three years. Um, so I kind of had this idea that I wanted to work with kids and my son brought home a flyer for a summer camp fair. And mm -hmm. my husband's like, you got to do this. And I was like, I don't have, I don't, it's just an idea. He's like, I don't, you've got, you got to do this. So I had a week, a week to put, to find a name, to put together a website, to, you know, throw together a logo. Um, yeah. And they, they had a table available. So I went a week um, after, you know what I mean? After working this on this. in my fire. I just, I just jumped out there and pretended like this was something I had been doing for forever. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we do. Hey, I went to um, the entrepreneur summit. Uh, Aaron Gregor Smith puts that on. Um, mm -hmm. And the witch, witch guy was standing up there. Oh yeah. And, and he started Witch Witch. He's like, hey, I picked my color. I made up a name and I made uh, a thousand business cards. And he went to this like um, a convention or something. He didn't even have a table. And he went around and he sold three or four franchises that way without wow. even having, a, he had not even, he said he hadn't even made a sandwich yet. <laughs> I that's how it. Witch Witch started. So I'm like, um, that's, that's that's an extreme. Okay. So, wow. And how did that go for you? Having the table and just like, yeah, this is what we do. Yeah. <laughs> it was, um, it was exciting. It was a little scary. You know, it was my first time out in the public. And um, so I just had to sign up and I was like, hey, we're still working on the summer camp details. But as soon as I get that nailed down, I will email you if you put your name here. And I left with 52 emails. Wow. That's so, good. Yes. That was kind of my proof of concept. You know, I was like, okay, parents want this. They're interested. Let's move forward. And so from there I contacted, you know, I found a, a place for that summer that what happened in G in January, um, that, that fair. And then I had a camp put together by that June. Um, wow. and so, uh, and it was booked, it booked out. Um, wow. Yeah. So okay. it went really fast. So one of my burning questions, I have two, yes. the, the five years talking to yourself in the past. Um, we're going to do that one next or okay. after this one. What is your most memorable win with a kid? So you've been doing it for three years. I know that we all have those students from the past that were like, oh, gosh, that kid, they're amazing. They went on to do this or whatever. After three years, do you have that yet? Mm -hmm. Okay, I tell do. us. Tell so us. I had a, a girl over the summer um, a couple years ago and in December I ended up getting an email from her mom and she said, I just want to let you know what has happened since, you know, since the summer. So her daughter was 12. Her daughter had started buying stocks and was investing. She was tracking her stocks every day, um, choosing more stocks. Uh, and she just said, I had lit a fire in her that they didn't know was there, you know? And so it was exciting to me, not only because she was, excited about finances and stuff, but maybe that was a career choice for her. 
you know, maybe that was something she would have never experienced otherwise. And so that was really exciting to me to see, you know, months down the road, it was still having an effect. She was still excited and interested. And that's, you know, obviously I want them to carry that through their life. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I know my children, they're eight and nine. Um, I would, and, and just like every other person that's probably told you this, my 20 year old um, in college could definitely use some some support, <laughs> you know, he loves Ross and TJ Maxx and spends up his money. Uh, he goes, but it was 70% off. I'm like, listen, you know, <laughs> you didn't need that shirt. So you were just burning money. Yeah. So anyways, um, but for them, I think catching them at an age where they're still, the world is their oyster and they're not jaded and they, I mean, every time I see that thing, if, if you save a dollar a day for this, you'll be a millionaire in this many days or, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, it's fascinating. And what, what we focus on grows. And so yeah. if they have a focus on that early on, Lincoln and Lila have mason jars full of cash hidden in each of their rooms. I don't even want to know where it is because, you know, I'm like, oh, wait. Do you have $5? Oh, Lincoln has $5 and we'll run up. You know, no, we, I don't want to know where Lincoln's $5 is. Um, it's, so they need to do something with that money. And they have a couple, three or $400 each after years of like Christmas and whatever. And they hoard their dollars. And every once in a while, I'll see them on Lincoln's bed. They both dump out their little jars and they, they try to count and see who has more. And then they start yelling at each other. Well, I think you borrowed money from me. I think you owe me twenty dollars. <laughs> and I'm like, why are you borrowing money from each other? You'll have hundreds of dollars. Right. So I hope nobody comes and robs me. But anyways, they need you. They need. They need. They need you to tell them what to do with their dollars. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, and you know, I was in English as a second language teacher. And so, and I have a master's degree in that. And so I, I really specialize in making these really difficult words approachable to kids. Well, mm -hmm. that works with finance too. Like, you know, they walk out of there knowing what is appreciation and depreciation and compound interest and assets Accessible. and liabilities. And they get so excited because they feel so grown up because they know these are adult concepts and they get it and they can talk about it and they can apply it. And it's exciting to them that they get to be, you know, a part of that world. Yeah, I love that. It, accessible money concepts for children. That is awesome. I love that that line. Accessible adult money concepts for children. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing what you know now about your business, what advice would you give yourself five years ago? Um, that it's okay to pivot. It's okay to pivot. I um, was so married to my teaching career that I kind of went through a mourning um, period when I left that. And I, I felt so lost and like unsure of, you know, because I wanted to be a teacher since I was in third grade. Really? And it took a lot to give myself permission to pivot away from that, regardless of how unhappy I was or frustrated or whatever. And so um, I just, and I'm trying to instill that in my kids now that yeah, especially I have a 17 year old and we're trying to help them to choose a career, but we're also saying that don't get married mm -hmm. to this career. Don't get married to, you know, you know, go for it, do the training, you know, experience the career. But if later you decide that that wasn't for you or you're ready for a change, then do it change and it'd be okay with that. And so I think that would be my advice. Don't get so married to what I'm doing. <laughs> be okay with pivoting and be open to change. Wow. Okay. So I just wrote down permission to pivot married mm -hmm. to your mindset. Yes. I, I think you need to, like you said, not be married to your mindset and have, give yourself permission to pivot. Mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. love that. Absolutely. Everything that you're saying, I'm like, Ooh, Ooh, I gotta write that down. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. So, Tell us about a time that you had the guts to fail. You you tried it, and 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 either it worked or didn't work. And it, you could go back to that one week time where you went there, um, and just dive a little bit deeper into, you know, you you quit your job, you mm -hmm. loved it, you wanted to be a teacher since you were in third grade, so you gave yourself you had the guts to fail then. 
but really and truly, I think entrepreneurial mindsets is all about the people who are willing to show up and try even when they don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I do that all the time. Tell us about some things that come to mind when I say that. Yeah, I would say that that first teen class when I, the first two actually that I tried to book out and I got nobody. Um, that was, that was hard because I was like, well, people are telling me they want this. Where are they? And so I had to dig deeper and find out like, why are they not showing up? Why are they not actually here if I've given them what they asked for? And then I had to pivot to make that more accessible, you know, so they, it really was something they still wanted and needed, but it had to be presented in a different way. It had to be, you know, in, in a way that they could use it or get there or, um, so that was, that hurt. That was very hard to, um, cause I was ready to just walk away from that teen class, even though I knew it was needed and wanted. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of had to take a step away for a little while and then find a new way to pivot and a new way to present it. Um, so that was definitely, I would count that as a failure. That hurt. I lost money on, you know, room rentals and advertising and all kinds of stuff on that. Um, and that first camp, that was scary because I had committed to 15 hours with those kids. And I thought I had 15 hours of curriculum, um, but I'm sure, you know, as a teacher, you get up there and it either goes differently than you planned or you got nervous and you went too fast or, you know, that sort of thing. And so that was, that was an exhausting week. Just I would come home every day and be like, OK, what, what worked? What didn't work? What do I need to revamp for tomorrow? What do I need to reteach? And like digging up new activities because that activity didn't work. So now I've got to, you know, so those were, those were 10 hour days, even though I was only teaching for three of them. Um, right. <laughs> that yep. was a it, very exhausting week. Well, I think that it's important to note that you went home every single day and you, you realigned what you were doing. You, <laughs> you reflected and you reassessed and you reevaluated and you just redid you know, um, being an entrepreneur isn't about executing it. It's about after you execute it, looking back and evaluating what you did. But if you right. don't do anything, you have nothing to evaluate. You know what I mean? You have nothing right. to say, how can I get better? Um, I'm sorry, but I just had like this flash around across my, it, this happens. So I got to tell you this. Okay. I don't know. I have actually, I, I'm, I have not been to your website in a while. But I just saw a backpack, a crossbody satchel, and a briefcase slash purse as circles for the age groups that you teach. Like the backpack is kids. Uh -huh. the, the satchel is a college kid or a, a high schooler, you know, it has to have a uh -huh. bag. And then the briefcase is the parent. That's cute. Very yes. cute. I was like, oh my gosh, that, that would be so awesome. Because <laughs> it's just a good little you know, um, like all of your PowerPoints could have the little backpack on them mm -hmm. because this is the kids. And then all of your adult, you know, what do whatever you want with that. Um, but I had to get it out of my brain. Um, <laughs> Love it. What, what do you see as your next big adventure, your next big pivot? What's your, what's your goal that you're working on now that you just, they're rattling around in your brain? Yeah, I've got two. Um, I'm trying to move more into the parenting um, arena, parenting seminars, um, talking to parents about how do you build a strong money mindset? Um, what things should you be doing to keep, teach your kids money management at home, um, to not make them afraid of money or, you know, that that emotions around money, be very careful with that, that sort of thing. Um, and then the other thing is I'm working on another, another video-based course uh, for gig workers, for like Lyft drivers, um, you know, shipped drivers, things like that. People who don't have a very consistent income, you know, how do you make that realtors, happen? How do you make that work? Can what? you make one of those for realtors? <laughs> yeah, I'm exactly. serious. I'm serious. Cause I mean, it's like, wow. And then the next month you're like, uh, and then the next week, wow. And I need, I need, I need a system. Yeah. That, Cause I get nervous. I'm just like, this is making me, I can't do this roller coaster. It's like amazing. It's just like, yeah, I can't control it. You know? Um, it's anyways. Yeah. The gig workers, I will download that and give it to my husband. Um, so 
Let's see. I've got all these notes I've been trying to incognito, right? Um, (laughs) What is your favorite age group to work with? Oh, um, probably the younger teens. I taught middle school and I love middle schoolers. (laughs) <laughs> I really do. Um, I really like that age group. What it's, a weirdo. I, I know. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's got to love them, right? Right, right. I could never do kindergarten. My friends who teach kindergarten, I'm like, I, I bow to you. They terrify me. I could never do little kids. <laughs> so. Yeah, I know. And it, I, w- I looked like a a 12 year old. So I couldn't get hired in a high school. And I was like, I, I did not want to tie shoes all day. So, you know, I was like, okay, we're, I'm going to do middle school and they, you do develop an affinity for those little, um, oddballs, you know, you're just like, you know, you're weird, but I like you. (laughs) I can be myself and I can roll my eyes at you and you get it. (laughs) Right. They don't cry. And you're not, you're not tying their wet shoelaces. No. Wondering wondering why they're wet. Yeah. Oh, (laughs) and you're not in, in, and they are not too cool for you. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. I like so, the sixth graders the best because they were new to the school. They were mm-hmm. older than elementary, but not yet. They hadn't grown their eighth grade horns yet. <laughs> right. Right. I did too. Sixth grade was my favorite. More than fifth grade because fifth graders were the top of the heap. And so they were, you know, very egotistical. But you get down sixth grade and they, they kind of get uh, humbled a little bit for a little while at least. So, yes. Um, yes. yeah, I, I like middle be- schoolers. I wish I got to teach with the teens more, um, but again, that's online, um, which is better for them. You know, they need to be able to do that in their own time and rewatch the videos and take it at their own pace. So, um, right. I love this, Cindy. Dry like, like, still- <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. They do still want to hang out with you. Some of my friends on Facebook are my, I taught GT English. The, uh-huh. So I had them for sixth, seventh, to- and eighth grade. So by the time they were eighth graders, like their parents had me on speed dial, like we were that close. And so they're my friends on Facebook now. It's, it's weird because one just called me yesterday. Her name's Shifra. And I go, hello, this is Brooklyn. And she goes, Brooklyn, I can't do that, Miss Calloway. I can't call you that. (laughs) She said, you're Miss Calloway. Okay. But I work for this lady now and we need to look at the house. Like, oh my gosh. So I'm actually doing business with one of my previous students. At, at 11, I got to meet her at the bungalow. So neat. Oh, my gosh. So, okay. Fun. In a perfect world with this last uh, two, two and a half minutes, what is your, like, pinnacle of success? Like, I know there's, like, the Pinners Conference for me um, or uh, uh, Where Women Create. I used to want to be in that magazine. Um I have aspirations and like, Oh gosh, if I could just be a speaker at this convention or whatever, what, what is, what is your, um, Hmm. like big goal there? Um, gosh, I don't know. That's a tough one. That's, it'd have to be some sort of parenting seminar or, um, I don't know. Are there any, I know, um, you, when you go to the doctor's office, there's that like parenting magazine or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Are there any things that you've researched, like big, you know, how they have a market in Atlanta or whatever, or the Pinners Conference or stuff like that? Are there any like parenting things that you know of, like conventions or whatever, that you do you know of any of those? I haven't. I haven't researched it out very much. I'm just now dabbling in that world. Um, This month, I'm doing a International Parenting Summit. Um, so I'm just now kind of reaching into that world and that. What is so, that? What is um, that? It's, it's going to be, so it's all, it's free for parents and teachers and you kind of log in and you pick the videos that you want to watch and they'll, it'll all be pre-recorded. You just click on whichever ones interest you or the age um, that interests you, that sort of thing. So that'll be on my, on my social media. That'll be, you can find it on there. Okay. So speaking of that, great segue for the last 30 seconds. Okay. How do we get a hold of you, find you? Where do we click? Where do we go so that we can um, get on a newsletter list and be in the know about your upcoming face to face, virtual, all of those things? Yeah. Um, so my website is the Smart Money Academy, all four words. 
um, the smart money academy .com. Um, And on there, you'll be able to sign up for my blog. I have a blog that comes out every few weeks that gives tips to parents um, and some things to think about and do with your sort of thing. Uh, Facebook and Instagram are both the Smart Money Academy. Um, and that will be have like classes and um, videos and, you know, things like that. So just kind of, that's where you find me. Okay. Well, I hope you get 52 more email signups after this. I know <laughs> that a lot of people, 10 a.m. is a little uh, difficult time to watch, but we, uh, Eka will then take this. She will extract the audio, make a podcast, and Yay. download this and make um, and edit the video with the, the the thumbnail and stuff. And we'll send you over your YouTube link as well so you can share it. Since it's in a Great. private group, you won't be able to share it right now. But um, it's streaming live to Bungalow U, and it'll soon be a podcast on my website and um, on YouTube. Excellent. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. It was great to talk to you today. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye.